sister. I'm a sophomore at ASU's Bear at the Honors College. This is my Bio 182 Honors contract. I'm doing it on New Frontiers in Neuroscience Research, specifically for Parkinson's disease, and research on finding a cure to treat those affected by the disorder. <laughs> All right, so I guess let's get started. So first off, what is Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a disorder of the central nervous system. Um, it basically breaks down all the neurons in your brain and they either die or are damaged. Um, this disease is progressive and chronic, meaning that it will last your entire life and the symptoms only get worse as time goes on. Uh, patients don't die from it, however, it makes life really difficult. Um, one in a hundred people over the age of 60 will suffer from some sort of Parkinson's disease. I think that's a staggering number. Um, symptoms of the disease are tremors and dementia. It causes muscle stiffness, um, forgetfulness. There's no cure, but treatments do include drugs and physical therapy to lessen the symptoms. Um, so what causes Parkinson's disease? Um, so like I said before, it's neurons in the patient's brain breaking down or dying. This causes a drop in dopamine, and dopamine is responsible for motor function. Um, research suggests that some form may be genetic, so there may be a strand in the patient's DNA that is just a mutation, and that's how their Parkinson's disease forms. Um, research also suggests that exposure to certain hazardous materials may increase the chances of getting Parkinson's, um, so hazardous waste or toxins. Oh, also, um, Lewy bodies uh, form in the brain, and those cause a high number of alpha-synecline to be present. So, Lewy bodies, what are those? Lewy bodies are clumps of substance in the brain that form, um, actually form prior to the symptoms starting to show. Um, scientists believe that Lewy bodies could be the key to learning more about what causes Parkinson's disease. Uh, the Lewy's bodies contain a high number of alpha synuclein, um, which is a protein that blocks the ability for dopamine to be produced. So now on to the research. There are two types of research. There's preventative and there's also finding a cure, but we're going to focus on preventative research. Um, so the first one is Parkinson's disease biomarker research. This is really cool. So basically, scientists take segments of patients' DNA, uh, healthy patients, patients at risk, and patients diagnosed with Parkinson's, and they're looking for gene mutations in those affected by Parkinson's and look for the presence of those same mutations in healthy DNA, and they're hoping to identify who's at risk in hopes of preventing the Parkinson's or slowing the degeneration of their neurons. Um, animal testing. So because the research could potentially be more harmful than helpful, animals are a must for this type of research. Um, rats are a really common animal for the scientists to use to test on, and they're used for new types of drugs and also tissue transplants. Drug testing is huge, especially because there is no cure for Parkinson's. Um, drugs are such a big life changer for the patients affected by it. So in this one trial, there was a new drug called acetapine, and its purpose was to protect the effect of on the neurons that produce dopamine. So they tried this on rats and it actually yielded really positive results. Um, the neurons responsible for producing dopamine in the rats were preserved even though they shouldn't have been with the new drug. I'm sorry, because of the new drug. Um, but another really cool one was the pig neuron transplant. So it was a clinical trial of 18 people. Either a placebo of saline solution was used or the neurons from a pig were implanted into the patient's brain. Um, they called this like a neurochemical factory. So instead of putting new neurons into the patient's brain, they were trying to preserve the ones that had not yet died and it slowed down the degenerating of the neurons. They used this as a trial for Huntington's patients also, and it showed major success. So for deep brain stimulation, electrodes are being placed in the brain to stimulate 
the brain in an attempt to regain function. So this was after medication no longer helped um, with tremors or lack of motor function. Um, research is still being done on which part of the brain is best to put the electrodes. And also, uh, researchers are trying to see if a permanent impulse generator could be planted in the brain to help long-term with motor function. Environmental studies. So as I said in the beginning, research suggests that exposure to certain toxins could be a cause of Parkinson's disease. So environmental studies were being conducted to determine the effects of hazardous chemicals and toxins on those susceptible to Parkinson's disease. And a trial was done with six different types of chemicals and how they affected the progression of Parkinson's disease. And two were specifically evident that they had a negative effect and progressed the symptoms of Parkinson's disease drastically. Unfortunately, the research did not suggest which two chemicals were the ones that caused this. But regardless, it showed that environmental factors play a big role in the progression of the disorder. So the next one, which is actually my favorite, is nerve growth factors. So GDNF is glial-derived neurotrophic factors. These are proteins that protect dopamine-producing nerve cells. So the researchers had the idea that if more GDNF were delivered to the brain, then this would cause an increase of dopamine in the patient's system, and that would ultimately help with muscular function and less tremors. So the next research is on stem cells, everyone's favorite. IPSC stands for induced pluripotent stem cells. So basically the scientists were taking skin cells from healthy patients as well as from patients diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and they were reprogrammed into the neuron cells that the Parkinson's patients had originally lost through the progress of the disease. Um, the really interesting thing was that in the new neurons, there was a major difference in the mitochondria between the healthy cells and the cells that were from the Parkinson's disease patients. Um, the mitochondria in the unhealthy patients were much more susceptible to damage than the neurons from the healthy patients. Similar Research is being done with Huntington's disease and ALS, and they've had really promising results because this research suggests that the root of the cause of Parkinson's disease may lie in the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. All of this research goes to show that there's hope. As I said before, 1 in 100 people over the age of 60 will suffer from some sort of Parkinson's disease. That's an insane amount of people. And even though research is a slow process, major progress has been made. And although there is no cure, treatments help patients affected by Parkinson's disease have a long, healthy life. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. For more information on Parkinson's disease and how to get involved, please visit parkinson.org or nia.nih.gov.